All right, so in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and refactor our login uh, endpoint. Because before, we weren't really doing any authentication, or not, not authentication, we weren't doing any validation. So now we're going to actually modify a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and just remove this whole thing. Okay. And so when we log in, uh, typically when you log in, you really only need just the username and password or the email and password. So what I'm going to do, it doesn't really make sense to have an email and a separate username. I should have thought about that earlier. So let me go ahead and modify this a little bit. I'm actually going to go ahead and drop this collection from, uh, from Compass. And I'm going to go ahead and just remove the username field and I'm just going to replace it. I'm just going to, we're only going to have email. I'm going to set email to be unique. I'm going to add the unique constraint so we don't accidentally create a secondary uh, user with the same email. And then we're going to just modify the register route. So instead of searching based off of the username or email, we're just going to search based off of the email. So we can actually just do this instead user.find1, pass in the email. And if the user is found, uh, we'll just go ahead and say user already exists. If they're not found, we'll create the user. So let's go ahead and just create a user real quick. So uh, let's go ahead and click. Uh, let's let's remove username. So it's just going to be password and email. So let me just change this to a password that I can actually remember. So let's just do hello world, one, two, three. Okay, so we created the user just now. So we have the email and we have the hashed password that's saved in the database. And we have the created app property. Good. Now let's go ahead and set the login method. So the login method is going to take in a request body. And remember, it's going to take in the email as well as the password. Uh, one more thing I forgot to do. Let me remove this username variable. Okay. So we're going to also remove username here. It's going to just be email. Okay. So uh, because we only have two properties here, all I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and just make sure that both properties um, are truthy. So if email, let me do this. If there's no email or no password, so if at least one of these properties are null, undefined, empty, then we're going to go ahead and return response uh, status 400. And we're just going to go ahead and send a message we'll just say i'll just do this um email or password uh actually we'll just send a 400 we'll just send the 400 whoops here we go okay so right now if i test this uh let me go ahead and create another uh tab so slash auth slash login it's going to send us back a 400 bad request. Okay. Now, uh, we're going to go ahead and do a couple things. Okay. The first thing that we need to do is we need to search a database for the user. So we'll go ahead and call this const user DB. And we're going to have to go ahead and call user.find1. And we're going to need to search based off the email. Now, let me go ahead and add the async keyword in front of the callback function because we're using async and the await keyword. Or we're using the await keyword, so we have to add async in front of our function. Okay. And what we're going to do is if the user is not found, we'll return a we'll return a 401, which is indicates that the user which indicates that authentication failed. You don't want to send a 400, it's better to send a 401 because you don't want to let the user know if that user exists or not when they try to log in at the very least. Okay, so we'll send a 401. Okay, so right now, let's go ahead and test this endpoint. Let's We're going to test this one by one. So let's go ahead and just send a JSON. So we'll send in a username and a password, or not username, sorry, it's email. And we'll send in a password. We'll just send in some fake data for now. Okay, now right now in our database, we only have one record and the email address for that record is anson at gmail.com. We're going to go ahead and send an email anson1 at gmail.com and we should get a 401. Okay, so this just tells the user that, oh, uh, authentication failed. It doesn't tell the user that the account uh, doesn't exist or not. Okay, so what we're going to do now 
is we've pretty much tested both this scenario and this scenario. So now we know that the user is found. So we need to go ahead and compare the password that the user entered in with the hash for this user that was found. Because the reason why we need to do that is because we need to make sure that the user is actually who they say they are if they pass in the correct email and the password. Okay, at least that's one layer of you know authentication. It doesn't necessarily mean that they are who they are because they could probably hack the account. But if you want to add extra layer of security, you could do something like you know two factor auth or um, something else uh, like a single sign on. But that's 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 completely out of the realm of this tutorial. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to need to go ahead and do this. So we're gonna have to call this compare password function that we created in the last episode. So we'll just create a variable called is uh, is valid. And we'll go ahead and call compare password. So that's going to be imported up top over here. And we're going to pass in the raw password. And we're going to pass in the hash. So I'm going to go ahead and reference user.db.password. Okay. And we're going to go ahead and do is if is valid. So if this is true, please remember the uh, compare password function is going to return whatever value bcrypt.compare sync returns. And this actually returns a Boolean, as you can see over here. So it'll just return true or false. It'll return true if the passwords match. Uh, it'll return, or I'm sorry, if the passwords match. It'll return true if the raw password compared to the hash are true. And it'll return false otherwise. It, like in, in, in other words, if it doesn't match. Okay. So if is valid, we'll go ahead and uh, let's, let's go ahead and just return a 200 for now. And then we'll go ahead and return a 401. So let's test this out. So let's go ahead and test out this Anson at gmail.com account that we created earlier. So right now, this should give me a 401. Okay. But if I go ahead and type hello world, which, uh, which was the past, actually it was hello world one, two, three. You're going to see it gives me a 200. So our authentication, or at least our validation mechanism, is actually working just fine, right? And let me go ahead and just add some logs as well. Just to make it a lot easier for us to keep track. Okay, so let's try this again. If we look at the logs, we should see... It says authenticated successfully. If I pass in the wrong password, it says fail to authenticate. Okay, so we're not done yet because remember, we still need to also add the user to the session, which is what we had in this login method earlier. So what we're going to do once the user has authenticated successfully is we're going to go ahead and remember, just modify the session object. Because right now, if, you, if we look in the browser, we still have this old cookie from before. But let me get rid of that cookie. And if I try to, whoops. If I save, let me start. Okay, so if I try to click send, uh, let me actually authenticate right now. You can see that we don't get any cookie. Okay, so there's no way for us to know if the user is logged in or not. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna modify the session object like we did in the previous videos. And we're gonna just go ahead and attach the user object to the request.session.user object right over here. Okay, so uh, we're gonna go ahead and just assign it to here and then that should be pretty much it. So uh, let me go ahead and test this out. So if I try to go ahead and if I try to visit this route, it should give me unauthorized because we protected this route earlier. Now let me go ahead and log in. So we have a 200, we get a cookie back Okay, and you can see our cookie does not give us the user's username or password or any sense of information. It just has this cookie value, which needs to be sent to the server. It needs to be uh, decrypted, and then we can then get the actual user that's logged in. Now, if I try to visit the uh, groceries shopping cart, we, we can actually visit these routes now. If I try to visit the groceries route, we can do that as well. Okay, so we're pretty much authenticated. Okay, that's pretty cool. And... Uh, that is pretty much it. So we pretty much have an application that has our own custom authentication. There's obviously some other stuff that we'll have to do, such as saving the user's 
uh, the, the session to the session store. And the reason why we're going to have to do that is because, like I said, if we destroy the server, like if, we, if we restart the server, right, and if we try to visit the routes, it's going to kick us out. It's going. It's not going to allow us to visit them because all, all of our session data is gone. So if you want to build an application that's persistent, that is that gives the user a better experience, um, it's better to use what's called a session store. So instead of storing all of the session data in memory, we can store it inside. Uh, we, we can store it inside a database, and I'll make a video about that later on. Okay, so that's going to be pretty much it for this episode. Hopefully this made sense, and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace out.